All right, I wanted to take just a few minutes and just walk you step by step through the procedures and the format of our final deliberation. This is all outlined on the assignment, but I know that this is probably for a lot of you going to be unlike uh, anything that you've done before. So I want to make sure that we're very clear on what it is that we're looking for and, uh, and the format that we're expecting and going to hold you accountable to. So remember, you're divided into two teams, uh, a team A and a team B. And then there's multiple groups per class period. So each group meeting will have a team A and a team B. And each team will respond to a separate question. All right, so uh, team A will get a question and team B, team B will get a different question. You will not know which question your team will be answering until you arrive at our Zoom for your final. So you need to be prepared to answer all three. Uh, team A will pre present first. So part one is the presentation. This is the bulk of your presentation. This is um, this is where you're basically explaining your position and supporting it with evidence. This is uh, like an essay on this question. Uh, it's recommended, highly recommended, that you divvy up the responsibilities. And here's maybe an, an example of how you might want to do that. Um, with three people in a group, you might decide that person one is going to be the person who introduces the topic, provides some historical context, states the thesis, and lays out the organization of the team's argument. So this would be the person um, who is doing the all-important task of the intro paragraph of an essay. Person two might be the body paragraph person, right? Provides a couple of historical examples and explains how those examples support the thesis that was laid out by person one. And then person three might be the counter argument person, right? That's addressing the nuance of your position, showing that you have uh, thought deeply and recognize the complexities involved in the questions that we are asking. Um, shows that you have thought about what, what other people might think, that you've concluded something, but you recognize that there are other views um, that, that people could hold and you've considered them, right? So those are all of the things that we're going to be looking for on a rubric. And this is just one way that you might want to divide it up between three different team members. Okay. After part one, uh, team B is going to have two minutes to prov provide commentary. So that first presentation is a five minute presentation. And then part two is a two minute commentary. So team B needs to really be listening closely to team A's presentation because as soon as team A is done, team B, we're gonna have a, just a very short transition and team B is gonna jump right in with what we call commentary. Now you could agree, you could disagree, um, but you, you're, you're not here trying to make the other team look bad. You are not here trying to win the argument. This is not a debate. This is commentary. So again, you could agree, you could disagree. Um, one of the things you might do is point out things that maybe team A forgot to mention. They don't have time to say everything. Uh, they only have five minutes. They're going to have to be, uh, you know, limiting the examples that they use. You might provide some examples and ask them, did you consider this? Um, you can ask them questions if things were unclear in their presentation. But again, it's not a debate. The goal is not to make them look bad. It's not to kind of shoot down their ideas. It is to think critically. If their ideas need to be shot down, then shoot down their ideas, right? But that's not that's not what makes a winning commentary. A winning commentary is a commentary that shows that your team was prepared to answer the question too, right? It shows that you've put enough thought into this question that you could have answered it just as well as team A did. It also shows that you were engaged in listening to team A's presentation because you're, you're responding to specific things that they said. It shows that you understand the nuance of the issue. It shows that you know how to ask good questions. That's what we're really looking for here. We're not looking for that kind of rhetorical slam dunk, beat up the other guy uh, technique. We're looking for uh, understanding, depth of understanding and preparation. You really need to be prepared for this part. All right, and then <clears throat> the next part, part three is team A's response to the commentary. So we'll give team A a short conference period in a breakout room and they get to just kind of go over what from team B's commentary they want to respond to. And a good response to commentary will show that team A was listening to team B's commentary. And uh, a good response will respond directly to the points that team B raised in their commentary. It'll also be honest and not defensive, right? If they have a valid critique and you recognize that, you're going to do yourself more good by recognizing it in your response to commentary than really trying to support a position that you now realize can't be supported, right? So be honest. Don't be defensive. Uh, don't go down with the ship. If they point out something that was flawed in your argument or a mistake and you recognize that in your conference period, then admit it, 
right? Admit it in your, in your response to commentary and you can tell team B, you know what? You were right. We, we forgot or we didn't know or whatever else. Uh, and you actually, that was a really good point. You're, you're going to get a better score if, if um, you're honest and not defensive than if you're just trying to, to bolster a terrible um, position. Okay, so that's response to commentary. That will uh, end the presentation, uh, and then it moves into teacher Q&A, and this is just the teacher and the presenting team. So in my example here, this is the teacher and team A, and a good Q&A will be kind of a natural back and forth. All team members should be involved. Nobody's sitting silently. It shouldn't be just one person answering all the questions. Um, it should provide clarity. So if the teacher is confused about some parts of your, your position, your answer should help to clarify and clear up that confusion. And ultimately the best conversation, the best Q and a should be taking the conversation to the next level where the teacher just really uh, understands your position. It's a defensible position. And the teacher starts then asking questions maybe that you haven't even prepared for. So if, if uh, the teacher then is asking questions about, you know, how you think it connects to other topics, you know that you've done a really good job with your presentation um, and we're kind of taking you to the next level. All right. So, after that Q&A, we, re we repeat the entire process. It's a 15-minute process, uh, but we put Team B in the presenting role. And again, these are the goals. This is what we've been trying to get you guys to do all year long. We want you to have high-level historical thinking skills, so contextualization, putting together an argument, using evidence to support that argument, um, historical reasoning, identifying counter arguments, all of that is the high level uh, historical thinking skills. We wanna see critical thinking skills that you can listen in the moment and hear and uh, <clears throat> think critically about what you're hearing. So listening skills, team B or whoever's providing the commentary in any given round, are you listening? Can you think critically about what you're listening to? And then finally, uh, can you engage in civil discourse on a topic that you know maybe you have a different point of view on? Okay. All right. So that's just a quick snapshot of what it is that you're going to be doing on the day of the final. Uh, remember, you will be showing up with your team and the opposing team, and you'll have 30 minutes with your teacher and uh, that opposing team will go through this process, right? So that's, that's how long you will be participating in your final deliberation. In terms of specific details about how you're going to be scored, so this was really general and broad, be sure to look at the rubric for a little bit more uh, detail on how the scoring will work. All right, and be sure to reach out if you need any help or need clarity on, uh, on this final presentation. Okay, I'm looking forward to hearing your responses, and I know if you're in McCarty's class, I know he is too. All right, take care and good luck.